Lung Squeeze, Coughing Your Lungs Out by Dr. Rob Schneider, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. Lung squeeze is a condition that is practically unique to breath hold diving. Scuba divers are not really aware of it, and sadly most doctors have never even heard of it, let alone treated it. There are many urban legends about this poorly defined and largely misunderstood phenomenon. So, let's dive into the topic and hopefully avoid getting brain squeeze in the process. To define the term, lung squeeze is also known as chest squeeze, or more formally as pulmonary barotrauma of descent, as opposed to pulmonary barotrauma of ascent. Pulmonary barotrauma caused by an increase in pressure is the result of this increased environmental pressure in closing the gas spaces of the lungs resulting in a reduction of lung volume to the point where damage occurs. This description and definition refers to what happens to the lungs because of increased pressure during the descent. Some authorities also include tracheal squeeze as part of the broader concept of pulmonary barotrauma of descent. It's not a perfect definition, so let's consider what the effects actually are. How does increased environmental pressure affect the closed spaces of the lungs? The physics and physiology work as follows. Firstly, Boyle's law determines that volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So in other words, the volume of gas in a closed system will decrease as the ambient pressure increases. In breath hold diving, our lungs represent a closed gas containing space and the increased ambient pressure is provided by the water's hydrostatic pressure during our descent. Every 10 meters we descend adds an additional atmosphere. Secondly, just in terms of the lungs, the total lung capacity of a 70 kilogram average male of about 1.7 meters in length is about 7 liters. As this lung volume is reduced as a result of increasing ambient pressure, it will eventually reach what is called the residual volume or absolute minimum volume. Beyond this point, at least theoretically, the lungs would be damaged. Now the original assumption was that this residual volume was the absolute minimum volume. And by definition, it would mean that divers could not dive deeper than about 35 to 45 meters, the equivalent of 4.5 to 5.5 atmospheres. Now this is clearly not the case, as the free diving depth records now exceed 200 meters seawater, which would translate to 20 atmospheres of pressure. This finding prompted research and ultimately the discovery of other physiological mechanisms that play a role. Besides the fact that the chest cavity itself can collapse partially, the most important additional compensatory mechanism is central pooling of blood in the chest from surrounding tissues. The chest wall venous blood vessels can accumulate up to 1.5 liters of blood. So essentially, the central pooling of blood in the chest equalizes the pressure gradient when residual volume is reached and thereby decreases it even more. The mechanism increases the pressure in the so-called pulmonary vascular bed and subsequently lung capillaries can rupture and bleed. In practice though, these symptoms allow the lungs to be compressed down to about 5% of the total lung capacity in individuals that are highly trained. This begs the question, what is the absolute limit? Well, even the record holders sometimes cough up blood, so some lung damage occurs. The question is, when is this going to become either irreversible or fatal? The signs and symptoms attributed to pulmonary barotrauma of descent are limited to very, very deep dives. When they occur, they typically are associated with coughing, particularly of coughing up blood. They can occur with repetitive dives even as shallow as 4 meter seawater, but then more is going on than simple compression. Not all cases 
of pulmonary barotrauma of descent are recognized immediately. Some features may pass and others may resemble flu or a cold. When pulmonary barotrauma occurs and symptoms and signs are recognized, these are what they may be. Chest pain, shortness of breath, a sensation of fluid in the lungs, coughing, fatigue, a sense of squeezing or constriction of the chest during the descent, dizziness, nausea, weakness, pins and needles, and faintness. Upon examination, one might find hyperventilation, the coughing up of bright red foamy blood, vomiting, respiratory distress, disorientation, loss of consciousness, neurological fallout, cardiorespiratory arrest, and of course, even death. From this long list of manifestations, it can be seen that pulmonary barotrauma of descent may range from very mild to even potentially fatal. It may last only a few minutes to a few months. Reoccurrence is also common, and the question about permanent damage ultimately arises. So how can this be avoided or limited? As a competitive breath hole diver, or even if you spend a lot of time in water, the following tips might minimize the chances for pulmonary barotrauma of descent. Maintain fitness, especially respiratory fitness. Build up your carbon dioxide tolerance to reduce lung contractions. These contractions are involuntary gasps against the closed glottis or mouth during breath hole diving, when the so-called physiological breakpoint is reached. Warm up to reduce contractions at depth. Avoid stretching out at depth with the arms or neck. Avoid excessive or violent movements. Improve and train the ribcage flexibility. Dive to depths you are comfortable with and avoid panicking. Turn around back for the surface before experiencing contractions at depth. Build up slowly when starting to dive to greater depths. Avoid deep dives immediately after prolonged travel, especially if you have changed time zones or had a significant exposure to altitude. Recover completely first. Learn techniques to relax while diving, especially at depth, and concentrate on releasing tension from around the chest area specifically. Learn to use the frenzel or mouthful technique for equalizing, because it's gentler and uses less air. If you do have a history of pulmonary barotrauma of descent, rest the day after a deep dive, as there seems to be an increased risk on subsequent days. If you start developing symptoms, terminate the dive. Maintain regular depth training sessions, especially during the off-season. Lastly, start exhaling just before the surface, but realize that this requires some training. How do we manage pulmonary barotrauma of descent? Well, it follows the basic emergency medical management principles, with the level of care being escalated depending on how severe the clinical presentation is. A sensible protocol includes stop further diving, ensure the safety of the injured diver, stop physical activity and let the buddy assist with buoyancy or towing, allow the injured diver to rest and ensure comfort, provide 100% oxygen if possible, encourage the intake of oral liquids as long as breathing is not impaired, but avoid alcohol, access the emergency medical services as quickly as possible, or call DAM, a good choice for first contact. Seek medical consultation, preferably with a diving physician, as soon as possible. Rest for at least two weeks before resuming diving, or ideally after being declared fit by a diving physician. And note that precautionary planning is better than playing catch-up. To conclude, pulmonary barotrauma of descent is a curious and much debated problem amongst breath hole divers. There's still much to learn about this condition and there are various ways in which it may either be avoided or at least mitigated. 
Perhaps this is indeed the absolute depth barrier to breath hold diving. Who knows? Today's barriers are tomorrow's trophies. In the meantime, dive safely and don't forget to enjoy it. <laughs>